Thank you.
church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen, amen. What a beautiful day it is to worship our Lord. It's wonderful to see you all here on this All Saints morning, and it's wonderful to have uh, you joining us in person, but as well as those who may be joining us online. Uh, just one announcement to go over today is the last day for pictures for our church directory. So if you haven't had your picture taken and you'd like your picture to be taken uh, for our directory, you can do so after service at the, in the chapel right in the room right next to us and uh, we'll get your picture in the directory. And with that, that is the only announcement that we have this morning and so... Uh, let us begin the service with our call to worship uh, with our saints and our All uh, Saints Day litany. The origin of All Saints Day can be traced all the way back to the earliest Christian church. Uh, it was established as a day to uh, remember and celebrate the martyrs of the faith and other saints who had died because of their faith. And over time, uh, the scope of this holiday expanded to not only include martyrs, but also all the faithful Christians who had lived uh, pious and virtuous lives. Uh, it is a day that uh, we recognize the saints' collective witness and express the gratitude that we had for their lives and the example that they set that led us uh, into deeper faith in Jesus. In the Methodist tradition, all Saints Day continues to be celebrated in this way, and it's a, a, a way to give God gratitude for the lives of those who have passed on, remembering that although they might not be saints uh, in the church, uh, as the church, Catholic Church universal, but that they are saints to each individual uh, that they knew, uh, saints who personally guided our faith, such as relatives and friends. So this year on this All Saints Day, we remember seven of our loved ones, our saints, who possess faith and lived an example for us. And so at this time, I invite uh, forward any of the families of the saints that are listed in our bulletin uh, to come forward. And when their loved one's name is called, uh, there, you are invited to light a candle that is on the altar here in their honor, signifying their eternal existence through Jesus Christ. Not, not dead and gone, but dead and alive in Christ. So at this time, if there are any family members that would like to come forward to light a candle, now is the time. We remember the great ancestors of our faith, from Abraham and Sarah to Paul and Phoebe. We remember the prophets and priests, the ministers and teachers who have taught us the way of God. We remember our grandparents, our parents, our aunts, our uncles, those who have gone before us in our lifetime. We lift up the memories of children and grandchildren, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, and parents whose lives ended too soon. We lift up to you, O oh God, the names of these we have lost in this past year from our lives, knowing that they are with your heart forever. As we read these names, we will pause after every name to remember and pray, 
and give thanks for their life. William B. Bill Edwards. Christopher A. McKenna. Joseph Namit Jr. Lois J. Phillip. James L. Young. Arlene E. Bush. Robert R. Garman. We celebrate the lives of those we have named, O Lord, and lift many more names in our hearts. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for all who have gone on to join with you beyond this life. We trust in the hope of resurrection and in the promise of new life in Christ and know that in our grief and celebration, O oh Lord, you are with us through it all and we are not left alone. In the name of Christ, in whom love lives, in whom love lives forever, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Let us rise for our opening hymn.
Amen. You may be seated. This time I ask you to turn to the section of our bulletin that has all of our prayer concerns and joys, those that we are lifting up before the Lord in a a special way, uh, those that may be in need of healing, maybe they're far away from home, maybe they're serving in dangerous places, or even those that are affected by uh, warfare in the world, those that are affected by tragedies around them, maybe they're natural tragedies around them. Uh, All of these we are lifting up uh, today. Uh, I encourage you to take this list home with you and in your daily prayers, uh, lift them up by name. Uh, One addition, my uh, my aunt Estelle is having some surgery this week. Keep Estelle in your prayers. Uh, And also for, I was given another name, Monica Murray, Murray. please keep Monica Murray in your prayers uh, this week as well. So at this time we will go to silent prayer and then I will close. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we ask you that you just bring your presence at this time into our sanctuary, into our hearts, into our souls as we worship you today, Lord. And we ask you to just um, envelop us, Lord, in your peace. Allow your peace to just uh, be a part of us throughout this whole day and in the week ahead. Allow your peace, Lord, to shine brightly through us and be taken into the dark world around us and allow us, Lord, to just be reflections of that peace for all in which we uh, come in contact with, Lord, for all of the conversations we have with others, for uh, everything we do this week, Lord, that brings us uh, to people that you love. Allow us, Lord, to just be a reflection of of your peace. Grant us the courage, Lord, to live faithfully in the midst of hard times. Let all of our fears, uh, let our fear, Lord, be the beginning of wisdom rather than allowing, Lord, our fear of the world to drive our actions. Let our fear of you be our wisdom. Help us, Lord, to embrace, Lord, your presence. Help us to embrace our heavenly citizenship and live uh, in this world, Lord, in the midst of a world that needs to know you, Lord. Allow us to live as a reflection of your glory, your love, your courage, your strength, and your peace. Show your mercy, Lord, and Heal those who are suffering in this fallen creation. And most of all, Lord, come. Restore the world. Restore all the brokenness. Make all things new, Lord. Make every death alive. We pray that your will be done in all of our lives as we lift up those within the reach of this community, Lord, that are struggling so much and are in our need. We know, Lord, that your grace is sufficient and that your power will conquer all of the ways in which these mentioned in our bulletin struggle, Lord. However, Lord, our prayer is that those who are struggling, 
know your power and feel your loving presence surrounding them, that your protection as care is working among them, and that your peace uh, awaits them, Lord. Allow them to feel this in a real way. Allow them through their suffering to be able to draw closer to you, closer to your peace, a peace exemplified by your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
First scripture reading for today comes from the book of Revelation, and this is Revelation 7, verses 9 through 17. This is the reading of the Lord. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from Every nation from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands, they cried out in a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, Who are these robed in white? And where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of God for the people of God. At this time, will the ushers please come forward with our morning's offering. If you are able, please rise. Please bow your head for the prayer of dedication. Holy God, in thanksgiving for your abundant goodness, we seek to reach out to others as you have reached out to us. We want to treat our brothers and sisters as we wish to be treated, with dignity, with understanding, and with grace. May these offerings prove to be a blessing to those who give and to those who receive. Amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the gospel, which can be found in Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend who set me to be judge or arbitrator over you. And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid upon up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Restore 
Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just lift up this time of word to you now, Lord, and in gratitude, Lord, for all of your words that have been given to us in Scripture. I just ask you, Lord, to take this moment and use my humble words to reflect your glorious words so that our hearts and souls may draw closer to you, may be truth in the midst of falsity and wisdom in the midst of confusion. Use only your words here today and not my own. In Jesus, your most precious holy name, amen. Uh, the last few weeks I had been talking about Israel and uh, uh, since it's all Saints Day and Communion Day, uh, we're going to move away from that and I will get back into Israel uh, next week and uh, today I'm just going to uh, preach uh, a sermon that's uh, more for All Saints Day and and the way uh, All Saints sermons normally work for a pastor is they kind of read like a, a funeral sermon would be. We give a message uh, that sort of points to the future hope, what God has secured in the souls of the saints of those who have passed on. But today, I would like to kind of change it up a bit and speak a little more to each and every one of us that are uh, still among the living. For the saints, uh, their souls are secure. But for us, uh, there is still uh, some things to be done. And the way in which we view the condition of our souls helps in the, the manner in which we do uh, the work that is yet to be done. Uh, and I think the parable of this uh, poor, rich, I would call him a farmer, uh, in our text can give us some valuable perspective. Uh, the way that uh, this parable um, is generally uh, seen, or the farmer is generally seen, uh, in, in this scripture is, is a person or a farmer that possesses an extreme amount of greed. Uh, this parable is taught to generally to give lessons warning about greed. It's also been taught to give lessons about the evils of storing up treasures on earth. It's uh, been preached on quite a bit of Sundays when a preacher is asking for increased tithing from the congregation, things like that. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that today. Uh, today, I'm not going to do that, but maybe in the near future, however our finance meeting goes, I guess. <laughs> however, although this parable can speak to us about greed, there are some confusing things for me about what Jesus is describing in this story. Because for me, the farmer really doesn't seem that greedy to me. I mean, meaning the farmer, after most likely, <coughs> excuse me, working his fingers to the bone, he's, he's kind of had a good year and he decides to save some money for a rainy day. And that doesn't really sound that greedy to me. I mean, to be honest with you, how many of us have savings accounts? How many of us have insurance policies or, or retirement funds, right? Uh, what are these things, uh, what are they actually? They are us saving up for rainy days. Uh, are we not just simply building extra barns so that we can put our minds to ease as well so that we can secure our future and keep from having some worries and anxieties so that we can relax and eat and drink and be merry. I don't really think any of us is much different than this farmer. I mean, when I read this parable and are taught about greed, uh, when we read this parable, we act like this farmer was some sort of crook or something with this insatiable taste for greed, you know, never having enough. Well, I know a few farmers. I, I spent some years uh, serving a church in Valance, surrounded by Amish farmers. Half the, the people in my congregation were farmers, and I know a couple farmers in, in this congregation as well. And greed uh, is not the word that comes to mind when I think of them. Uh, maybe more words like honest and humble or hardworking. Uh, on the farm, there's always work to get done. 
about the time the farmer is getting ahead, right? There's always a piece of equipment that kind of breaks down or, uh, you know, there's a disease or something that runs through their herd and there's vet bills and uh, farmer's work is hard. It's never ending. Is getting a little head uh, so wrong for a farmer? The truth is, though, although Jesus warned about being greedy, uh, he never said that it was wrong for him to get ahead. He never said that the farmer was uh, hoarding ill-gotten gain, and he never commended, condemned this man for being rich. All he said was that the rich man produced abundantly. The guy had a good year. And we all could be so blessed, and the truth is that most of us have been blessed from time to time and have had good years. This farmer wasn't greedy for more. The fact that this farmer was ready to kick back and relax a little bit was proof that he wasn't a man that was never satisfied. He was finally satisfied with his work. Moreover, the farmer didn't come about his abundance with bad business or uh, dishonesty or something like that. He came about as well through very hard work. So what is it? What is the problem with this man? Why does God call this man a fool? Well, I think the first problem is, is this man has trouble looking beyond himself. Uh, this man never saw beyond just him. There is no other parable which uh, is so full of the words like I, me, my, and mine. In this parable, not even one other human being makes an appearance. He is the only one. Every line that this farmer speaks is spoken to himself, and everything he says refers to himself. My soul, my goods, my barns. You see, this farmer never saw beyond himself, for beyond himself is what Christianity is all about. That is what true richness is, or as Jesus puts it in this parable, being rich towards God. And I love the way that Jesus put that. The rich farmer in the story is not being criticized for storing up his treasures. He's criticized for storing up his treasures while not being rich towards God. And I think we are so used to being grateful for the abundant ways in which God has blessed us that we can easily forget that there is a return to this blessing. That part of being blessed means a responsibility to give our blessing back to God and to the world that he created. You see, we have the kingdom of God that is here for us now. The kingdom is our true life and our true life's value. This is what the poor rich farmer was missing out on in this sort of selfishness. He was missing out on the riches towards God, of loving God and loving one another above all else, above forgiveness, generosity, gentleness, hospitality, and not just believing in those things, but living them out in his life, incorporating them into his work, his play, his learning, his rest, his family, and his friendships. This is not work to store up these treasures. This is God's gift of his treasures, given for all, so that we all can become the dream that God has for all of us. This is why God calls this man a fool, not because of his greed, but because he's missed out on the point of life and become focused only on these exterior sort of things. I don't want to mislead anyone by saying that life participating with God is all high in the sky, peace and, and love, because the reality is, as we all know on this All Saints Day, that participating in God's life uh, is peace and love, but it's peace and love that sometimes weeps and anguishes, doesn't have all the answers to all the troubles around us, but ultimately it is a peace that loves that keeps believing, keeps believing in the God who wants us to live in the security that the Lord is caring for our lives and is the ultimate protector of our souls as souls with worth. Because if God thinks that we have worth, then we truly do have treasure in heaven. 
which ultimately allows us to look beyond ourselves and find worth in others too. In addition, beyond not being able to look beyond himself, this farmer has other problems. He's not able to look beyond this world. This farmer has made the fundamental mistake of believing that his abundance in that barn is the ticket to secure his future. He's under the illusion that he, with his riches, can transcend the everyday vulnerabilities and needs of life and produce for him some sort of security. The farmer is using riches to say that he can be independent of others and ultimately meaning independent of God, that he is secure in himself and what he has gained. The consequences of this are obvious and they are simple. Um, not only does the manner of thinking deprive others, but he also believes that his blessings are a security or a guarantee of life into the future. And so God's response to this thinking is saying, you fool, don't you know that you will be dead tomorrow? The farmer's error is not that he has built buildings or barns. It's not that he's never satisfied with enough. It's that he's using his blessing for the wrong purpose, to secure his future for himself. And the irony is that he will be dead in a day and his riches will be worthless to him and to everyone else around him. And so what does that tell us? Reading this, Jesus is telling this story, you see, to answer a question just right before that about inheritance in the passage, right before, if you... Remember the reading. You see, the farmer is not the only one who is close to death in this story. You see, Jesus is on his way to the cross, and he's using this moment to teach about our inheritance. Not an inheritance that is solely for the brother in the crowd who asks Jesus this question, or even the farmer who dies with no heirs that Jesus is talking about. Instead, Jesus speaks of the inheritance that belongs to all of us in this room. Just a few verses after the parable of the barns, Jesus says, Have no fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, and that is all the inheritance you need. That is all you need to know about your future. So on this All Saints Day, know that all the saints who we mourn today Their souls are secure in death because it was God's good pleasure and grace and Jesus' sacrifice that secured them into the inheritance of eternal life in the kingdom of God. And for us who remain, the same applies. All the grains in the barns aren't going to help us. Our souls are only secure in Christ Jesus. If we can live our lives with this central understanding, this understanding at the center of our being and thought, that only can the fruits and the blessings of our lives be what they were meant to be, a simple and miraculous means by which the Creator cares for the created of this world. So relax. All of it's taken care of. Eat, drink, rejoice, praise, worship, forgive, love, repent, rise, work, and rest. And have faith that your whole life and your life beyond death is provided for by the one who says, this is my body, this is my blood, just as those in the Revelation Scripture whose robes were washed white in the blood of the Lamb is for you, too. And that's all the grain you need in any barn that you possess. Glory be to the Lord our God, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him. Do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? If you do, say, I do. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who earnestly repent of their sins. Do you want forgiven of your sins? 
If you do, say, I do. I do. And Christ our Lord invites to his table all who seek to live in peace with one another. Do you seek to live in peace with one another? If you do, say, I do. I do. And Christ our Lord invites to his table all who intend to live a holy life. Do you want to live the life of Christ? Do you want to live a holiness in your life? If you do, say, I do. I do. Therefore, brothers and sisters, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament for salvation as we confess our sins before God and before one another. At this time, confess your sins to the Lord privately. In his great mercy, our almighty God and heavenly Father has promised forgiveness of sins for all who repent and with true faith turn to him. May he have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear these comforting words of Jesus Christ our Savior. He says to all who are truly that turn to him, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you all are forgiven of those sins you just mentioned. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks to the Lord our God. It is right in our joy to give thanks to you in all places and at all times, Almighty Father. You are the source of all truth, life, and love. You made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When in our sinfulness we turned away from you and our love failed, your love remains steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, forever singing the hymn to the glory of your name. All praise and glory is yours, O God our Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to the world, your Spirit anointing him to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to comfort those who mourn, to proclaim freedom for captives, and to announce the year of our Lord's favor. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. And our great high priest he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, The Lord took the bread, and he broke it, he gave thanks to God, and then he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, 
He gave thanks to God. And then he gave it to his disciples and he said, take from this, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance, Lord, we proclaim the mystery of faith. We celebrate this, our redemption, O Father, receiving these gifts of bread and wine with thanksgiving for the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for us the body and blood of Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive the Holy Sacrament and partake of his most blessed body and blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ one is your church, that Christ may dwell in us and we in him in the fullness of time. Put all things in subjection under Christ and gather us together with all the saints in the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. We ask this through your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit in your holy church be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us recite together the ancient confession. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to your table, not trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant mercies. Therefore, in partaking of the flesh and the blood of Jesus, grant that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his precious blood and that we may dwell in him and he in us forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the table is set. You're all welcome to come forward and receive the grace that the Lord has given. Today we will be doing uh, intention. Uh, we will try to come down this aisle. Uh, we got enough ushers today? Uh, okay. At the direction of the ushers. I know we were a little short. Uh, uh, so didn't know if we had enough, but at the direction of the ushers, please come forward at this time, and then we will exit out uh, that aisle over there. Thank you. Bless you. The body and the blood of Christ given.
Let us rise for our closing hymn. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in communion with the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep all of you now and forever and unto ages of ages. Brothers and sisters, go in peace and love. Amen. Amen.